there, welcome to the Cinema and TV How-To Series. I'm Jen Vaughn, here to teach you about how to use a studio camera in a multi-cam studio environment. There's three simple things that I want you to keep in mind. Number one, how to make smooth camera moves. And that starts off with not forcing it. Number two, make sure that you're always staying sharp. You're gonna get critical focus whenever your talent changes their distance between the camera. And number three, we'll learn how to control the image brightness and whiteness so that all of our studio cameras are calibrated. So let's start off with the first step. Number one, don't force it. Studio cameras have locks on them that will prevent you from panning or tilting, such as the pan lock. Now you see back here on the back side of the camera, I'm going to loosen the pan lock before I pan left or right. If this lock is all the way turned to the right, you're gonna find resistance. Don't force it or else you'll end up stripping the pan lock. Once you loosen the pan lock, you'll notice there's also a tilt lock. The tilt lock here is gonna prevent the camera from tilting up or down. So make sure that you've loosened the tilt lock before you try to make your camera tilt down or tilt up. Make sure it's nice and loose so you can get a good tilt, but not so loose that it's flopping around. You'll see on the other side of the camera, we have an identical knob, this is our tilt drag. And this allows you to have a slightly stiffer or looser drag on your tilts up and down. So make sure you get familiar with the tilt locks and pan locks. Because when you're making camera moves, you're not just panning or tilting or zooming, it's almost always a combination of the three. You're panning and tilting and zooming to adjust for proper framing. Next step is to make sure you understand how to get critical focus. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you use a narrow angle lens position. You zoom all the way into a subject using your zoom servo on the right side. When you zoom all the way in, you have a narrow angle lens position which allows you to have a very shallow depth of field. Then you would rack your focus, the focus servos on the left, which would allow you to get nice, sharp focus on our subject. Let's go ahead and have our subject walk in here. Hutch, come on over. We'll practice getting nice, sharp focus. You could step on that mark right there for us. Yeah, no and as I mentioned before, whenever you know the distance from your subject to the camera, you're gonna want to make sure that you zoom all the way in. Great that he's got pinstripes on too for, for, for focusing. But usually, you would wanna make sure that instead of focusing on a piece of clothing, that you're actually focusing on the talent's eyes. So I'm gonna tilt up here, zoom in as far as I can possibly zoom, and then once I get a nice shot of their eyes, rack the focus on the left to get nice, sharp, critical focus. And any time your talent moves away from the camera, or if your camera moves closer or further away from the talent, you always have to re-rack and get critical focus. <laughs> Lastly, you wanna make sure you understand how to control the brightness, which is controlled with the iris ring, and also how to white balance. So here on our lenses, you can see there's actually three rings on our lens. The first ring is our focus ring, which we control with the focus servo. The middle ring is the zoom ring, and you'll see that's controlled with your zoom servo. Lastly, this third ring controls our iris, how much light is being let into the lens. And as you close it down to a higher number, such as an f-stop of 16, you're reducing the amount of light that comes in. And when you open it up to say an f-stop of 2.8, you're letting more light into the camera. Once you learn how to control the brightness, the last step is learning how to manually white balance. We would set our lights in our environment, bring a white card to the set, and then right underneath here, we have our white balance switch. If you toggle the switch down, it will allow you to black balance, closing down the iris completely for black, and then you flip the switch up, which will manually white balance on the white card in your light setting. So that's pretty much it. It's as easy as one, two, three. Remember, smooth moves, Always stay in focus, stay in control of your brightness, and remember to practice. A good camera operator is always practicing smooth camera moves. 
We'll see you again for another part of our series in the Cinema and TV How-To.